Uh, I appreciate the opportunity, Medina, to be here with you today and to uh, uh, share with you an a, a update of where we're at with COVID-19 and what the implications are going forward. Uh, suffice to say, uh, as we sit here today, you can see how quickly things are changing uh, right here in the United States, let alone globally, in terms of the uh, relationship of, of everyday life to COVID-19. We know that to date, between about 5 and 7% of the United States has likely been infected with the virus. And uh, many of those who have recovered will hopefully have durable or protective immunity, at least for some period of time. Uh, the way to stop the transmission of this virus is to have enough people become immune. Now, you can develop immunity through having natural infection and hopefully acquiring that kind of protection. The problem with that is, of course, that means you have to get sick and unfortunately a large number of people will die. Also, we can get at that through a vaccine, something we'll talk more about today. We have a number of vaccines that are being evaluated right now, but there's nothing that's coming anytime soon. And I would say for certain, nothing that will have any impact on this country for the remainder of, of this calendar year and well into next year. So we're on it our own right now in terms of trying to limit people from becoming infected uh, and developing more of those immune people because of the cost that it means in terms of that uh, uh, illness acqui being acquired. This is a real challenge because it says that, in fact, uh, uh, we are sitting on top of what could be a very rapid expansion of cases and we're not well prepared. Uh, today, as we uh, do this webinar, uh, we're looking at uh, things we'd never thought of before. New York City, New Jersey, uh, in Connecticut now putting in place a quarantine for people coming from certain states in the United States for, uh, with high incidence of disease. Uh, we're looking at Europeans uh, quarantine, or basically uh, not allowing US citizens to come into European countries without quarantine. Uh, and this is a 14 days or more. Uh, this was almost unheard of. When you look at the cases in the United States, uh, much of the increase occurred uh, coincidental with uh, basically reopening the economy, uh, letting people get back to whatever they were doing before uh, this all hit, and uh, realizing that that surely was going to put some people at likely risk of transmitting the virus. But uh, we had experienced pandemic, pandemic fatigue to the point of where most governors and uh, authorities said, OK, go ahead. Well, surely the reopenings had a, an impact. There's no question about that. But when you look at, uh, there are some states where the reopening has not yet uh, caused any increase in cases. And so we're really at a quandary right now to understand it. But let me just suffice to say that today, um, we have as, almost as many cases occurring in the United States as we had at the peak of the original uh, problem in April of this year. And I think we're only gonna see those cases continue to increase substantially over the next several weeks. We have cities like Houston, Texas, which are a very serious uh, situation right now, uh, marching towards what very well could be another New York City-like experience. Uh, the states of Georgia, Florida, Texas, Arizona, all are seeing greatly increased rates of uh, infection and hospitals in a sense almost being overrun at this point with the need. But we also have states throughout the West. We're seeing this in Northern California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. Um, and while some have attributed the increase to the warm weather in the South, where people were then spending more time inside with air conditioning, and that was causing transmission. In these other Western and Northwestern states in the United States, that doesn't support that at all. So the message is we don't know why we're seeing this increase in cases and what it means. Uh, but we're, it's here. And I will have to say that my best crystal ball would suggest that we're going to see this activity right through the summer. Uh, I don't see at this point a great reduction uh, coinciding with the fall uh, opening of higher ed. Uh, I think that uh, that's going to be a challenge. Uh, and we need to plan now for that very possibility. Um, if cases do decrease between now and then, I have little doubt that they will come back in substantial numbers over the course of the next six months. So we now live in a COVID world where we have to plan accordingly and we have to get up. Uh, the idea of the, our mindset has to be about months and months, not days and days of, of, of responding and preparing. Where do we go from here? Well, we all hope we're going to have a safe and effective vaccine. 
at this point, uh, that is something that is still potentially a, a possibility, but at the same time, you can't count on it uh, with any certainty. We all hope for a, an effective vaccine, but there are reasons why that could be a challenge. Uh, you'll hear some people talking optimistically about a vaccine even this year yet, and I caution you to be very careful about assuming that that be the case. Um, if we do get an effective vaccine, we don't know what effective means. And what I'm referring to is that what if it only protects 50% of the population or less? What if the very population that's most at risk of serious illness, those who are older, those who have underlying health conditions, those persons with obesity, where we know that's a major risk factor for infection, uh, how will it protect them? And that's gonna be a huge question we're gonna have to ask ourselves. So let me just summarize it here by saying that um, we are in a very, very serious challenge with this virus. Uh, it is going to continue to impact our lives in ways that most people could never have imagined. And in that regard, I can say that um, it, it's going to be something that's gonna take a lot of creative, creative imagination and commitment to getting through. The other thing is, is that if you don't know someone as you've yet today who's had COVID or you don't know anyone who's died from COVID-19 illness, it's just a matter of time. And that's also one of the other things we have to think about is how do we support each other, not just from an institutional standpoint, but personally, how do we support each other as we move forward in the days ahead where COVID will absolutely uh, have a significant impact on our lives. So with that, I'll, I'll close uh, and uh, turn it back over to you for questions and uh, hopefully be able to provide you some use, usable insight. Thank you.